Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be exploring our beautiful neighbor Jupiter. We're going to find out what would happen to our own planet if this event actually occurred and most importantly we're going to talk about the idea of whether this is actually possible at all. Anyway, welcome to What The Math. So the Universe Sandbox actually has a simulation called Exploring Jupiter. And here, as you can imagine, the only thing that does happen is Jupiter explodes. Let's observe this beautiful event from the moon of Jupiter known as Ganymede. And here, if you stay here long enough, you'll discover that things don't really go very well for Ganymede. As soon as the planet Jupiter explodes, after only maybe a few hours, things around Jupiter start kind of being destroyed as well. So you can kind of see the closer moons feel the heat first and then the outer moons as well. And this is because what's happening here right now is all the debris is flying out at really, really high velocity and is colliding with the essentially surface of these moons. Now, what would happen if um, this beautiful planet exploded, but from the perspective of our own planet Earth. In other words, would anything happen to our beautiful planet if this kind of an event occurred? And today we're going to be talking about this event occurring in general. Do planets actually explode? Can planets actually explode? Have we ever seen a planet explode? Uh, if you want a short answer, the answer to all three questions is no. But let's talk a little bit more in detail about it. So let's go to simulation cold solar system. Uh, we're going to start right here, we're going to slow down things a little bit. And the thing is, if you just explode Jupiter right now, where is it? If you explode it right now, things just kind of disappear and done. So nothing eventful really occurs, because the way that the game processes things um, is basically, to save memory, fragments disappear pretty quickly. But we're going to cheat a little bit. We're going to do the same thing, but this time we're going to tell the game to actually keep the fragments from Jupiter when it explodes. So we're going to initiate the explosion and let's slow down time a little bit because it's going to happen pretty quick. And then as soon as this happens, we're going to select all of these fragments and do something really crazy. We're going to basically convert them into full body objects. In other words, they're going to become objects that don't just disappear suddenly. And here's what you're going to see happen in a few seconds. As soon as this occurs, if I actually zoom out of here, you'll see that a lot of these fragments that I have now converted will start flying apart and flying away from the central point where the explosion occurred. And they're going to start spreading across our solar system. It's actually going to look pretty amazing. Um, so here, this is the explosion. This is really, literally what happens when a planet explodes. And if you look at each individual fragment, it's relatively big. It's sort of, um, I guess it's a size of a, of a moon, uh, a random moon in our solar system, maybe even like a big moon, like kind of like closer to our own moon, actually. So if I look at an individual fragment here, the mass of each of them is about 24% of our own moon. And they move at a speed of about uh, 21 kilometers per second away from the central point. And what's interesting about this particular phenomenon is that this would require a tremendous amount of energy. And for this reason, because it requires so much energy, it's sort of kind of impossible for it to occur in real life because planets don't really have anything that can make them explode so much. Unlike, you know, sci-fi movies tell us planets don't really explode. Even if you shoot things at them with like super powerful weapons. I believe Scott Manley actually made a video about this once calculating how much energy it would take to explode a planet if you had like a super powerful laser gun and I believe this was sort of to com commemorate the Star Wars um, release last year or two years ago. And he calculated that it would be just a ridiculous amount of energy that we just can't get out of a single planet or out of a single spaceship. And so this event is more or less science fiction. As a matter of fact, more fiction than science. But what's interesting about this is that it does look absolutely incredible. And I wanted to actually see if any of these fragments collide and affect our own planet Earth. So we're going to wait a little bit. We're going to wait for them to get to the part where our planet Earth is. But what do you think? Do you think they'll actually collide? Do you think anything will affect our planet Earth? 
I think that because I know a little bit of statistics, it's very unlikely to occur. I don't think any of these rocks will actually make it to our planet or even come close to it. But let's see if I am proven wrong this time. So we're going to wait for this. And I, I really just wanted to see how beautiful it gets as it spreads across from our solar system. Because if I were to accelerate time here a little bit more, you would see that each of these fragments is actually just kind of escaping into the abyss of space away from the central point where Jupiter used to be. And what's even more interesting is that statistically speaking, none of these fragments will hit anything on the way, not even a single asteroid. Or at least it's very, very unlikely. And that's because there's just not enough fragments here. I mean, maybe in reality, if something did explode this way, there would be a lot more fragments. But with the amount of fragments that we created, which is probably in, I don't know, maybe like a thousand or a couple of thousand here, it's not very likely that any of these will hit anything. So we can actually just look at Earth and see if any of them hit something. And just for fun, near the end of this video, we're going to take one of these fragments and actually collide it with uh, our planet Earth. And oh, wow, I actually found a fragment that was 10 masses of Earth. That is a little bit bigger than I expected. I think for the most part, most of them are about 24% uh, of the moon. Oh, well, I guess some of them are a little bit smaller and some of them are way, way bigger. But notice how as they move away from the center, the distance between them grows more and more. And so eventually they'll kind of just all fly apart, leaving nothing behind. Now there's actually, um, there's a few articles you can find online about exploding planets. And the only scenario that scientists think may occur is if a large planet collides with another large planet head on. So in that case, there might be something that could resemble an explosion. But for a planet to actually explode, and now we're going to do this maybe with just another, let's, let's just do it without our planet Earth. Let's come closer to it. And I'll just show you the energy required here. Let's slow this down for a second. If you go into the explosion, it actually shows you how much energy you need to explode this object. And here you can even change it to, let's say, the megaton of TNT. And if you look at it, it's basically equivalent to having like a two or possibly even three kilometer um, in diameter of a ball of uranium. So if you, if you could find so much uranium and put it in the middle of our planet, and then explode it from there, maybe it would create this much energy. But even then, there's just way too much stuff on the inside of our planet that would probably stop the nuclear reaction from spreading. So even with that amount of uranium, it's very unlikely that anything would explode a planet. Now, it looks like these fragments actually kind of flew apart too far. You can still see them right there. So this kind of is not as fun as it used to be. Let's actually, let's see what would happen if one of these fragments actually did collide with our planet. So we're going to slow down this maybe a little bit more. And we're going to take, uh, select one of these fragments, wherever they are. And using the same mass, we're going to collide it at the same speed of 18.3 kilometers per second with our beautiful planet Earth. So let's see what would happen. And here's actually what one of these fragments looks like in comparison to our own planet Earth. Here, here's what it is from a distance if you zoom out. And let's actually discover what would actually happen if one of them did strike our planet. You can imagine nothing good. Uh, so the chance for this happening though is pretty low because Jupiter is separated into these very large chunks that seem to be a little bit too big for, for them to collide any specific location in our solar system. So this, this does look very beautiful, but even though this looks like a huge explosion, this is only on the surface. The, the inside of the planet are just fine. They're still quite stable and would only be affected if something really just went through our planet Earth. But even then it would not really explode. So for a planet to explode scientifically, there is just seems to be no mechanism we're, we're aware of currently that would make it happen. So don't expect any planets to explode anytime soon, or really ever. Stars, on the other hand, do it all the time, and nova and supernova are very regular occurrences. And so there you have it. So we basically simulated the explosion of Jupiter, the collision with our planet Earth of one of those fragments, 
And I guess now what we can do is maybe see what would really happen if, I guess, Jupiter exploded uh, next to our sun. There's another simulation called Sun and Exploding Jupiter. Now, let's see what happens here. And as you can see, as soon as the Jupiter planet explodes, all of its fragments just kind of sort of get absorbed into our own sun. Now, this actually probably did happen. The planet might have not exploded, but sun that we currently have seemed to have... It seems to have a relatively high metallic content, meaning that our own sun probably swallowed quite a few uh, fragments that may have become planets or may have even been planets. So swallowing a Jupiter or two may have been actually part of our sun's diet. Well, anyway, that's kind of all I wanted to talk about in this video, and hopefully now you know what would happen to our planet Earth and I guess the rest of the solar system if ever by some chance Jupiter exploded. But it is not going to happen, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to spoil this, but it's just not going to happen. Anyway, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Space out and let's watch what happens to beautiful Europa as the fragments from exploding Jupiter make their way here. Space out and as always, bye bye.